Right now, we have an administration that is killing oil pipelines, slow walking natural gas licensing, illegally halting lease sales, and writing rules that Congress never gave the executive branch the authority to write. This is how President Biden regulates our energy industry. In the morning, he complains that gas prices are, are too high, and he chastises oil and gas companies to produce more. Then he takes a nap, wakes up, and says the very existence of oil and gas companies offends him, and it's our duty to put them out of business. It's absurd. But today I want to focus on the Biden administration's reckless release of our emergency crude oil stockpile, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. The President's energy policy has been a failure, so much so that today the United States produces one and a half million fewer barrels a day of oil than it did in November 2019. That's why oil and gas prices are high. It's no mystery, and it's not principally because of the war in Ukraine, as much as Joe Biden and the Democrats want to blame it on that. At the same time that President Biden has tried to strangle U.S. energy production, he has simultaneously groveled to Saudi Arabia and to Venezuela, asking them to increase their production, and he's attacked small business gas stations around the country and told them, just lower your prices. Then he's taken the unprecedented step of releasing an arbitrary amount of our emergency crude oil stockpile in order to try to lower gas prices before the midterm elections. The Biden administration has even sold at least two million barrels of oil to the Chinese Communist Party's state-owned oil and gas company, Sinopec. One million barrels in April of this year, another million barrels in July, sold to Communist China. China, at this very moment, has created the world's largest stockpile of crude oil, which, according to Bloomberg, totals 926 million barrels. In comparison, under Joe Biden, our own reserves have fallen to 492 million barrels of oil. That's the lowest level since December of 1985, according to the U.S. Department of Energy. Of course, no mention of China in the administration would be complete without noting that Hunter Biden's private equity firm, BHR, has a major stake in Sinopec. But there is something we can do. I'm calling on this body to pass the No Emergency Crude Oil for Foreign Adversaries Act, which is co-sponsored by 11 of my colleagues. This bill takes the common sense step of prohibiting the Secretary of Energy from selling our emergency crude oil stockpile there to protect the national security of the United States to communist China, and also to other foreign adversaries, including Iran, North Korea, and Russia. It would also require a full accounting of where our crude oil has been sent for refining since the Biden administration began releasing the oil in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve last November. It's important to note we have no issue with exports in general. In fact, we want to continue to help our European allies remove themselves from their reliance on Russian oil. A recent study found that since 2015, U.S. oil exports increased oil and natural gas development in the United States, reduced global oil prices by $1.93 per barrel over a six-year period, added $161 billion to our GDP, and added nearly 50,000 jobs here in America. But under no circumstances should we be giving our emergency stockpile to our enemies, particularly at a time when they are benefiting from stockpiling cheap Russian oil and gas. This poses a direct threat to American national security, and the Biden administration shows zero interest in stopping it. That's why Congress needs to act. This should be a simple and easy bipartisan measure 
to say we're not going to sell our strategic reserve to communist China to use it against America.